Counter Strike, Left 4 Dead. Counter Strike, Left 4 Dead. This one time, my buddy. When most people think of one of these games, they usually don't think of the other, but I do, and for a good reason. The idea of these games being connected has been a decently discussed topic for years. There's even a theory that the terrorists from Counter-Strike actually created and spread the zombie virus in Left 4 Dead, which is a very silly theory, but it actually kind of did start to make sense the more I looked into it. Not for reasons anybody had been pointing out prior, but these games are definitely connected in more ways than one. Whether it is the conspiracy theories, the lore and references in each game, or the rocky development of Left 4 Dead and how it relates to Counter-Strike, I'll make sure to cover it all here and explain just why I think these games are connected. But real quick, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is a Counter-Strike trading site that allows you to instantly trade or upgrade your Counter-Strike items very easily. Skins Monkey has a ton of options to pick from, and you can even filter by budget or many other filter options as well. You can also claim a free $5 just by trading up to $100 worth of skins, or less if you're happier with a lower bonus. And using my link in the description as well, you'll also get a 5% deposit bonus. So thanks again to Skins Monkey, and let's get back into the video. Oh man, this is just like Counter-Strike! The very first prototype of Left 4 Dead was actually accidentally released in just November of last year for Counter-Strike Condition Zero. The prototype of Left 4 Dead being called Terror Strike. This mode resembled more of infection from Modern Warfare mixed with Counter-Strike than the Left 4 Dead we have today. The survivor team, or T-side, is tasked with planting a bomb at a bomb site, just like a normal game of Counter-Strike. But the real difference here is, is that the zombie team, or the CT side, has to kill all these survivors with just their knife, which is the only weapon they can use. This prototype was a bit buggy for me, but it seemed that all the zombies would respawn at the 4 minute mark or the minute 30 mark. So no matter how many zombies you killed, they would eventually just respawn. The only way the survivors could actually win the game was after they planted the bomb. And once they did, all the zombies would respawn, and only then could they kill all the zombies and win the game. This bomb didn't explode either when it was planted, or at least it didn't for me and I waited like 3 minutes. The cool thing here though is once you plant this bomb, it plays a very familiar sound once it respawns all the zombies. This earlier build of Left 4 Dead was as basic as it came. The only real modifications it made to Counter-Strike Condition Zero was the zombie sound effects, which were a bit spooky at times. The zombies would also make a loud watery sound when walking, presumably so they couldn't sneak up on you, and there was a reloading voice line each time you reloaded. But as fun as it was for a little bit, I am glad that they ended up changing the direction of the gameplay. The cool thing here is that the same company that worked on Counter-Strike Condition Zero, Turtle Rock Studios, is the exact same company that made Left 4 Dead 1. So I think it's safe to assume that this build that we're looking at right here went on to influence the coming iterations of Left 4 Dead. Now let's keep that in mind as we jump ahead a couple months to the release of Counter-Strike Source. Using the developer commentary mode in Left 4 Dead 1, you can hear game designer at Total Rock Studios, Mike Booth, say this. While we were developing bots for Counter-Strike Source, we discovered that a few of us armed to the teeth with automatic weaponry against 30 knife-wielding enemy bots was a lot of fun. Left 4 Dead is the result of this evolutionary design process. Interestingly enough, Mike Booth was also tasked with working on the AI for Counter-Strike Condition Zero, so we can also assume that he's talking about Terror Strike here as well. So what came of this Counter-Strike Source Left 4 Dead build? Well, this is actually what turned into the very first Left 4 Dead that we have today. It of course went through a ton of iterations, some being so foreign you wouldn't even think it's Left 4 Dead. In fact, a lot of these earlier Left 4 Dead builds basically look the exact same as Counter-Strike Source, which you can really see just how many Counter-Strike Source assets they really use for this game in the alpha previews at QuakeCon 2007. Thankfully, a lot of these Counter-Strike Source assets were replaced, but you can actually still find a lot of them in the game we have today. The weapons from Counter-Strike Source were also released in Left 4 Dead 2, but those were in there for more complicated reasons like German censorship and all that other shit. Eventually they were just released for everyone. Once they got the core gameplay loop done, I assume that's when they went to work on the story and campaign, which of course follows the four lovable characters that go on to kill everybody around them. Lewis, one of the main characters, will even remark, Oh man, this is just like Counter-Strike! when picking up a weapon sometimes, which of course coincides with the larger conspiracy theory that I will talk about later. Also, I'd like to say that this Richter Overtime video right here goes on to talk about this Left 4 Dead build a lot more in detail and was a huge inspiration for this video, so I'd really recommend checking it out. Anyways, once Left 4 Dead was done and got its praise, Valve quickly got on to working on Left 4 Dead 2 after seeing how successful the first game was. In fact, Left 4 Dead 2 came out exactly one year after the first game came out, which is a far cry from the development hell that Left 4 Dead 1 was in for so many years. This was of course because Valve took over for Total Rock Studios and put all their effort into this game. 
Three years after Left 4 Dead's 2 release, Valve goes on to release their newest game, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And what Keen Eye players were very quick to realize was just how many reused assets and weapons from Left 4 Dead 2 were in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. The Desert Eagle from Left 4 Dead was the exact same model in Counter-Strike, but was thankfully shrunk. The MAC-10 in CSGO was also the silenced submachine gun, but with the silencer taken off, I mean, just look at it. The AK-47 was the exact same model. The scar that was in the beta CSGO was also the exact same model from the combat rifle in Left 4 Dead. The Glock was also reused as well, but not all weapons were reused. But not only did players notice the exact same weapon models, but they also noticed the same locations. The burger tank from Left 4 Dead looks eerily similar to DE underscore bank in CSGO. The swamp town from Left 4 Dead 2 looks eerily similar to St. Mark in CSGO. Same with sugarcane from CSGO and hard rain from Left 4 Dead. Lake from CSGO and this lake house from Left 4 Dead also look very similar. And with all these similarities, people started to wonder if this was here for a reason other than just recycled assets. Sparking the now somewhat popular theory that Left 4 Dead and Counter-Strike are connected, which I'll of course get into in a bit. My reasoning for all these recycled assets is exactly that. They are recycled assets. See, the development for CSGO was not the smoothest. If you didn't know, it started off as basically a paid project from Hidden Path Entertainment to port over Counter-Strike Source to consoles. I won't get too into detail, but the game sucked. It lacked any real differences from other Counter-Strike titles other than just being a shittier version of it. And on top of that, all the unique ideas that they were going to add ended up getting scrapped anyways. But Valve thankfully pitched in and pushed the game in the right direction. This is all speculation, but since the development was so rocky, I assume that Hidden Path might have borrowed assets from Left 4 Dead or used the same locations as inspiration. Interestingly enough, the only shared locations that made it from Left 4 Dead into CSGO are in the demolition game mode. In fact, five of the seven maps in this game mode were the Left 4 Dead 2 inspired locations. So I can only assume that Valve or Hidden Path Entertainment must have rushed this not so popular game mode by just using these maps as inspiration. This is of course the most reasonable explanation and the explanation most normal people will accept, but for the not so reasonable, this sparked a conspiracy theory. Valve has been known for sharing universes in their games, the most iconic of which being Portal and Half-Life. These connections are made through dialogue or other hints throughout the game. Black Mesa can eat my bankrupt- Sir, the testing? Right. Or how about the ship named the Borealis that Aperture Science created that was revealed to be an entire plot point for a scrap version of Half-Life 3? The point I'm trying to make here is that people have a reason to speculate that Counter-Strike and Left 4 Dead are connected, especially considering how closely related they are during their development. I didn't even talk about this earlier, but even Left 4 Dead 3 has references in Counter-Strike. Not a ton, but some references were leaked in the release of Counter-Strike 2. A very common theory is that the terrorists from Counter-Strike actually ended up blowing something up to spread the green flu that now infects the Left 4 Dead universe. Or maybe the reason that the CSGO locations are more pristine than the Left 4 Dead 2 locations is because it takes place in a world after it's recovered from the zombie infection in Left 4 Dead. All these theories coinciding with the shared weapons, assets, and locations. Yeah, I hope your reaction was the same as mine when reading these theories. It is an interesting thought exercise, but it can't be correct right? Well, let's dig past the surface level stuff and really look into things. Left 4 Dead takes place in the year 2009, presumably the same year that the green flu was spread. Well, what year does Counter-Strike take place in? It's not exactly said, but using your brain a little, we can figure some stuff out. Looking at most of the weapons in each game, it is a bit hard to tell, some of them even being modern enough to be placed in today's world, but cars and technology are probably the biggest way to tell that Counter-Strike is definitely more modern than 2009, especially on maps in Counter-Strike 2. But the main thing that proved to me that Counter-Strike most definitely takes place after 2009 is the tablet and the drones from Danger Zone and Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Other than that, it is a bit ambiguous. Some maps seem to be stuck in the past like maps like Office, but I think it is safe to assume that Counter-Strike's Danger Zone and Counter-Strike 2 definitely take place after 2009. As far as the shared locations in the game, a lot of them don't even make sense. The walls on Sugarcane are completely different than the walls in Left 4 Dead, and it takes place near a beach, which Left 4 Dead's definitely does not. St. Mark is obviously a completely different area than this swampy area right here, and the bank in CSGO is a bank when the one in Left 4 Dead is a burger tank. The only map that is basically the same is the lake house and lake. Trust me, if Valve wanted to connect these worlds, they would have made it a lot more obvious. Counter-Strike is also referenced in Left 4 Dead. Like I mentioned earlier, having one of the main characters, Lewis, say, Oh man, this is just like Counter-Strike. So it may even be that Counter-Strike is a playable video game in the Left 4 Dead universe. Lewis will also reference the main protagonist from Half-Life, Gordon Freeman. Man, 
I feel like I'm Gordon Freeman. And boxes of cereal in the game also have Team Fortress 2 on it, so all these games can't really be connected in the Left 4 Dead universe, other than them just being a pop culture reference like it is in our real world. All the other stuff like the boat sharing the same name or the same textures are nothing other than recycled assets. So I basically just proved to you guys that Counter-Strike and Left 4 Dead most definitely don't share the same universe and just wasted all your time. Just kidding, I do have something extra. The Payday series, created by Overkill Studios, is for some reason completely connected to Left 4 Dead. This is Overkill software we're talking about here, connected to Valve. I love Payday as much as the next guy, but that's crazy even for me. Now, as for the universes being connected, I'll get to that in a bit, but let's just focus on the surface level stuff for now. Payday the Heist has the Hunter, Boomer, Smoker, and I think this is supposed to be the tank, as masks you can get. These masks are obtained through the No Mercy Heist, which just so happens to be a one-to-one -one copy of Mercy Hospital from Left 4 Dead. At first, this mission wasn't considered to be canon, which you can see here by a lot of people trying to disprove this entire theory with it, but it actually was recanonized in Payday 2. So it is now an official real location in the Payday universe, thus placing the Mercy Hospital from Left 4 Dead into the Payday universe. During this heist, the crew is tasked with retrieving a rare virus called the Green Flu, which just so happens to be the exact same virus as the one from Left 4 Dead. You can even run into Bill from Left 4 Dead in the elevator when first starting the mission. Now, what does all this have to do with Counter-Strike? Well, in 2013, in Payday 2, they released a map called Go Bank. This map being identical as the map from CSGO called DE underscore bank, hence the name Go in Go Bank obviously being an homage to CSGO. And on that same map in CSGO, DE underscore bank, you can actually find Hoxton's mask, Dallas's mask, and even Wolf's mask hidden around the map. Or at least you could have until these masks were for some reason removed as of May 2017. So now the only tie from Payday to CSGO is Go Bank from Payday 2. Unless you also want to count the Daryl agents in the Counter-Strike we have today as references to Payday, which I would kind of like to believe that. It's them versus the top crims in the business and I'd say they're packing their darks about now. So did I waste your time again? Probably. But if you want to continue to speculate, since Left 4 Dead and Payday are for some reason maybe connected, and Payday and CSGO are for some reason maybe connected, then maybe Left 4 Dead, Payday, and Counter-Strike all share the same universe. But the most likely thing here is that maybe they were trying to connect Payday and Counter-Strike, but the idea was retconned, which is why the mask got removed from the CSGO map. As for the Left 4 Dead and Payday connections, I don't think it's anything other than just a giant easter egg and a fun way to advertise the games together. This No Mercy mission is nothing but a giant easter egg for Left 4 Dead, and it's pretty obvious that it was meant to be nothing more than that. I mean, if this does take place in the Left 4 Dead universe, where are all the zombies in Payday? I guess that's an entirely different video. Got a feeling this job is gonna come back from the dead to haunt us. But if you want my conclusion, I'd say Counter-Strike and Left 4 Dead are definitely connected, especially in references to Left 4 Dead as well as the development for each game. It is kind of crazy to me that no matter which Left 4 Dead you're talking about, it'll always be connected to Counter-Strike. Whether it's Terror Strike and Condition Zero being the very first prototype for Left 4 Dead, the first Left 4 Dead using Counter-Strike Source assets, the shared assets from Left 4 Dead 2 in CSGO, or even the fact that Left 4 Dead 3 was referenced in Counter-Strike 2. But are the universes actually connected? Most likely not. But if you want to continue to believe that delusion, be my guest. It is a fun bit of headcanon to have. I'd say the most likely theory here is that Counter-Strike is just a playable video game in the Left 4 Dead universe. As always, please subscribe and like the video if you liked it, and if you didn't like it, go and leave a comment why, and I'll try to do better next time.